Ya, selamat malam kawan-kawan Wiki semuanya dimanapun Anda berada. Selamat datang dalam acara Gelar Wicara ke-7 yang diadakan oleh Wikimedia Indonesia. Gelar Wicara ini kita tujukan untuk memberikan pengalaman baru kepada masyarakat umum, terutama kepada para kontributor dalam proyek-proyek Wikimedia di Indonesia tentang isu dan hal baru, baik kerjasama dengan lembaga lain dan cerita pengalaman kontributor yang terpilih selama dia berkontribusi dalam proyek Wikimedia. Sebelum acara dimulai, perkenalkan nama saya Rahmat Wahidi. Saya adalah uh, sekre uh, Sekretaris Jenderal di Wikimedia Indonesia. Pada sore atau malam hari ini, saya akan memandu acara gelar bicara daring ini selama satu jam ke depan. Dalam gelar bicara ini, uh, kita akan membahas segala sesuatu tentang kerjasama yang telah dilakukan oleh Wikimedia Indonesia dan Uh, Wikimedia Netherlands uh, bersama kita hari ini telah hadir uh, dua orang narasumber tentunya dari uh, Wikimedia Netherlands di Belanda dan juga saya hari ini akan ditemani oleh satu orang uh, moderator uh, yang akan mendampingi saya selama uh, gelar wicara ini baik saya, per saya perkenalkan Mas Pian untuk tampil ke acara Halo selamat malam uh, jam 7 dari Jakarta Jadi uh, hari ini kita uh, kedatangan tamu uh, Ada Sandra, Sandra Rinches yang merupakan Direktur Eksekutif Wikimedia Belanda atau Nederland Dan juga Lisi Jongma yang merupakan anggota Dewan Pengawas Untuk kerjasama bidang kebudayaan uh, di Wikimedia Netherlands. Jadi uh, Wiki, ada Sandra di sana dan juga ada nanti Lisi Uh, Sandra, could you introduce uh, you to us? Who are you? And then how long have you involved in the Wikimedia movement? And then what is your current projects? The, the same question goes to Lizzie too. Okay, well, hello everyone. I'm, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Sandra Rintjes. I'm the executive director of Wikimedia Nederland. And I joined Wikimedia Nederland uh, about eight years ago, so already quite a long time. Uh, before that, I, uh, I worked in a very different sector. I worked on the environment and water management in, in the Netherlands, but also in other parts of Europe. And then mainly on things related to communication and involving people in environmental and water management issues. Uh, and at the moment at Wikimedia Nederland, I'm sort of, well, one of the things I'm doing is the cooperation with Wikimedia Indonesia, which is a great honor to, to do. Uh, and I'm also working at the moment at uh, implementing the new universal code of conduct for the entire Wikimedia movement in Wikimedia Nederland, how we use that uh, in our events and on our platforms. So that, that's me. Lizzie. Hi. Yeah. Hello. I'm, hi. I'm Lizzie Jungma. Um, I'm board member of the Wikimedia of Wikimedia uh, Netherlands. Uh, I've been board member for three years now. I was recently re-elected, so I'm really happy with all the, of the support of the community in the Netherlands. Um, and I uh, represent the GLAM community in the Netherlands, so the galleries, libraries, archives and museums. Um, my special focus as board member is to represent the, the GLAMs and to help them uh, connect to Wikimedia and to help Wikimedia to co uh, Wikipedia to connect to the GLAMs. Uh, and I'm also very interested in open data, open knowledge, open information. And I think um, open data and GLAMs should you know, always be a happy family. And then we can also do a lot of cool stuff with Wikimedia, which we'll, we'll probably discuss later on. Um, I also have a, a daytime job. Um, I'm ICT project lead uh, for the network of war resources. And we collect digital resources about the Second World War in the Netherlands uh, and uh, inflicted by the Dutch elsewhere. So we have a side track that focuses on the relations uh, with Indonesia and the Netherlands uh, in the period 1940-1950. So I'm also interested in all the glam material that may be available in Indonesia about this specific period, um, which is difficult for us to find. Yeah. 
Thank you so much Sandra Lizzy. Uh, jadi teman-teman selama sesi ini berlangsung, teman-teman semua boleh mengajukan pertanyaan, komentar, ataupun tanggapan terkait dengan topik hari ini. Uh, bisa langsung dalam kolom komentar di Facebook atau mungkin di Youtube. Nanti jika pertanyaannya memang uh, terkait dengan kegiatan ini atau topik ini, kita akan langsung tayangkan. Uh, saya juga ingin mengingatkan ke teman-teman semua, ke kawan-kawan Wiki, bahwa kita tetap harus mematuhi kebijakan ruang, ruang ramah acara Wikimedia Indonesia, yang pada intinya kita tidak diperkenakan untuk melakukan sesuatu yang mengganggu kenyamanan penonton lain, supaya berbicara hari ini dapat berlangsung dengan kondusif dan memberikan pengalaman yang positif bagi seluruh penonton dan juga uh, teman-teman uh, Wikimedia Indonesia juga. Nah, untuk kebijakannya teman-teman bisa akses melalui pranala bit.ly garis miring WMID garis kebijakan ruang ramah acara. Uh, sekian uh, perkenalan dari Sandra dan Lisi. Jadi, uh, Sandra and Lisi, uh, after that you prepare some presentation, maybe you can start with that and then you can explore uh, about how Uh, beautiful cooperations with the clam institution in there and then how you open up our collection in there thank you okay thank you very much it will just be a brief introduction and then we can really uh, talk and discuss and uh, and ask and answer questions which will be much more interesting uh, I just want to give a sort of small introduction in how Wikimedia Nederland cooperates with GLAMS, galleries, libraries, archives and museums. Next slide, please. Um, at the moment, uh, Wikimedia Nederlands has sort of partnerships with about 45 institutions. Uh, that doesn't mean that all of them are active all of the time. Sometimes uh, a GLAM partner is active contributing to the Wikimedia projects for one year and then we don't hear for them, hear of them for uh, a time and then they come back. Uh, for example, last year, which was of course a strange year because of the, the COVID pandemic and the lockdown, we, we worked with five museums, uh, nine archives, uh, three public libraries and four uh, academic or specialized libraries. Next slide, please. Um, The GLAM sector, the Dutch GLAMs, are very interested in contributing to the Wikimedia projects. Uh, at the moment, there are more than 1.2 million items on Wikimedia Commons, which were donated by Dutch GLAM partners. Uh, that doesn't mean that Wikimedia Netherlands was involved in all of these donations. Uh, a lot of the, the GLAM partners by now work independently, so they know how to upload materials and they, they just do that. Uh, some of the, the donations were a result of a direct partnership with Wikimedia Netherlands. And also uh, the Wikimedia community uh, looks at the websites of, of GLAM institutions and if they find interesting uh, materials, they will, uh, they will harvest them, they will transfer them to Wikimedia Commons. Uh, there is one very active Wikimedian in the Netherlands who by now has transferred something like 200,000 photographs from the website of the National Archives to Wikimedia Commons. This is really amazing. This guy has something like five laptops running at the same time and is just continuously uploading uh, materials. And he does that just by himself without any help either from the National Archive or us. Um, when we work with GLAM partners, what does Wikimedia Netherlands do? Well, the, the most important thing is that we want to make the GLAM partners enthusiastic to cooperate with the Wikimedia projects. And then we explain them and help them to do that. So we give technical advice on how to upload materials, how to add metadata. Uh, and we provide all kinds of online tools, checklists, manuals, how to do certain things so that, that GLAM partners can also work independently. Um, Another important thing we do is that we uh, sort of establish connections between the GLAM institutions and the Wikimedians so that they can work together. And, and we have now already sort of long running partnerships between uh, Wikimedians who live in a specific town and their local museum, for example. Uh, we organize trainings and seminars. We, we communicate about uh, activities. 
And one thing which we also do, we try to help the, the GLAM partners find money. For example, if they want to hire a Wikimedian in residence, uh, we help them approach government funds or other funds so that they can hire a Wikimedian in residence. Next slide, please. And what do the partners do? Well, uh, the, the one of the main things, of course, is they share their collections. They donate content uh, traditionally to Wikimedia Commons, but nowadays also they donate do they donate data to Wikidata, which is really very important. Um, also, our partners host events. We, we have conferences or uh, New Year's receptions or other uh, events at the venue of uh, our partners. Uh, when we have conferences or workshops, they give presentations. And when the community has specific questions, if the community needs expert advice on certain content, the, the GLAM partners also help. And what is very interesting is that we are now seeing that the GLAM partners are also beginning to use Wikidata for, for their collection management and for data management. So it's not just that they put information in, they also reuse what comes out. And I think that's a very important development and, and shows how, how respected the Wikimedia projects now are. Uh, next slide, please. Um, a lot of GLAMs in the Netherlands have materials related to Indonesia. Uh, all the museums, archives, libraries, and also universities that were uh, established before 1940 will have collections concerning Indonesia. And they are really very interested in sharing that material, uh, especially if they know that Wikimedians in Indonesia are really interested in it. So, next slide, please. Um, I'll, I'll just briefly show or introduce uh, a few of the partners we work with and what they have. And after that, we will just go for a discussion and, uh, and, and make it a little more lively. Uh, one of our partners is at National Archiv, the National Archives, and they hold all the government records and archives dating back to 1500, 1600. They, they have some stuff that is older, but since the 1600s, they sort of collected everything, uh, which also, of course, relates to a lot of government material related to Indonesia. Uh, they have a huge collection of maps. Uh, they have, for example, the archive of the Dutch official topographical service, which made the most beautiful maps of Indonesia. And I'm really interested in getting those sort of uh, onto Wikimedia Commons so that they can be used. And a huge, huge collection of photographs. It's really amazing. Um, there is a link at the bottom of the slide where you can actually go to Wikimedia Commons and see some of their materials. So maybe we can somehow share the presentation later. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Koninklijke Bibliotheek, the, the Royal Library, uh, that is the National Library of the Netherlands and yeah, they basically have everything. Books, manuscripts, uh, maps, and, and they're a very active partner of, uh, of Wikimedia Netherlands, so uh, they, they donate quite a lot. Uh, next, please. Uh, the Museum for World Cultures, that's actually, it used to be three different museums. Uh, one, a very old museum dating back to the 19th century. Um, and they have uh, a huge collection of materials uh, about Southeast Asia and specifically about Indonesia. I, I checked their own websites and they literally have, I think, something like 200,000 images connected to Indonesia uh, in some way. They have been a partner for uh, for a long time, and last year they released a specific set of images which were requested by, by Wikimedia Indonesia, and they really like that way of cooperating. Next, please. KITLV, uh, the Royal Netherlands Institute for Southeast Asian Studies. Um, they are sort of similar to the Museum of World Cultures, only they're more scientific. They're a proper research institute. Uh, and they also uh, last year released images which Wikimedia Indonesia had uh, had requested. So lots of photographs, maps, and, and lots of other information. Next, please. 
The, uh, this is the Institute for Sound and Vision, uh, and their building really looks like this. Uh, this is probably the most colorful building in the Netherlands. Uh, they are the National Archive for Audiovisual Materials, and interesting stuff they have is news bulletins on films, which were shown in cinemas from the 1930s and the 1950s and radio broadcasts, also of the radio service in the Netherlands, which broadcasted to Indonesia. There was a specific radio connection. Uh, and they have released already very interesting uh, uh, materials. The, the, the link uh, down there is well, well worth checking. Uh, one of the things which is sort of strange, but that's in general, is of course all this material is very Dutch. It's from the 1930s and the 1950s, very much from the Dutch colonial perspective, which means that, yeah, if Dutch people watch this, they are very embarrassed. But still, it's historically, it's, it's very interesting material. And, and maybe that could be something we discuss later. How, how do we deal with this sort of the, the material from uh, which is really yeah. difficult? But next slide, please. Something completely different, uh, the Museum for Natural History uh, has lots of collections from uh, zoological and, and botanical expeditions in Indonesia. And they have amazing collections of photographs uh, and, and, and drawings of, of birds and animals. They also have uh, lots of uh, photographs of dead animals, which are stuffed, and I don't, think that's particularly interesting, but for people who are interested really in, uh, in biology, it's, it's very valuable material. Next, please. Uh, NEOT and the Network Boar Resources. Uh, Lizzie just mentioned that because that's where she works now. This is the official government research institute and the official government archive about all material related to uh, the Second World War, also the Second World War in, uh, in Asia. Uh, next, please. <clears throat> yeah, this is sort of the big one. This is uh, the Rijksmuseum, the National Museum. Uh, they have everything. Uh, they have huge collections also related to Indonesia, historical objects, artifacts, uh, art, uh, the Rijksmuseum is a bit a bit strange in this list because we don't, as such, have a real partnership with the Rijksmuseum. But they have a very open policy. They, they share all their materials under an open license on their website in very good quality. So although there is no real official partnership, we have almost all their material uh, and, and they are always willing to share more. Uh, I think that this is where we should stop the presentation and then see if there are questions and, uh, and talk. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. It, it was nice to see like you collaborate with a lot of institution in there. I'm just curious because like, uh, do you have any experience when you start uh, to introduce yourself to the Gram institution and direction is, is it good or not? Because like um, mostly if you do that one donations, uh, we need to uh, explain them a lot of the things including like the license uh, and then you, usually they reject the option of CC, um, CC BY or CC BY SI or open. Uh, is, there, is this happening in the Netherlands too? the same story with us or just like because your law is very good so so it's not really hard for us to 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 make them believe that they should open their collections uh, i'll say a bit and then i think lizzie can can say much more from her own uh, experience uh sharing the collection and uh, making it available on internet for uh, most glam partners is, is not a problem uh in the netherlands a specific cooperation with with wikipedia and wikimedia is sometimes something they are uh, a bit more hesitant about uh, because you work with the community and all the material can be reused and changed and uh but they are also very interested because wikimedia and wikipedia is where the people go to find information so 
yeah, I think there's a willingness, but but I think Lizzie can explain more from her side how the experience is. Yeah, I I worked at the Rijksmuseum, the last institution that Sandra mentioned in her presentation. I worked there until six years ago, and um, in 2013. Um, we started talking uh, both to Wiki, Wikimedia to, uh, uh, because they had done this project that, that is called Wiki Loves Art, which was really sort of guerrilla fun projects. And it, it, you know, it was just fun and it put museums and glams in, in the spotlight and it attracts new audiences that were really interested in talking about art. So we were really enthusiastic about these kinds of projects um, and we were also talking with Europeana, a big European collaboration uh, of all sorts of glams to share collections on European level and both Wikimedia and Europeana uh, attracted huge crowds so people online would look at our uh, at collections at Europeana or at Wikimedia Commons or at Wikipedia not per se at our own website. So we noticed that audiences were more out there than on our own website. And we really wanted people to see what we had in our collection. Uh, and also, uh, for instance, the Rijksmuseum has 2 million objects in its collection and it only has 30,000 on display. So where do you show everything else that you have that is also important? So that's when we started to talk to some of the volunteers of Wikipedia. And it started really small. So we had a Wikipedian helping us write an article on Wikipedia, which was a bit of a struggle, but it was also fun. And then we started talking about uploading. And then, you know, we started doing small projects. I remember very vividly the project that we did about birds on paintings. So we have a lot of paintings at the Wright Museums and we know a lot about painters and paintings, but we know nothing about the birds on them. So we had a couple of people interested in birds and we uploaded uh, images of, of you know, historical artifacts with birds and people really started annotating with the birds. And by doing these kinds of projects, uh, which weren't, you know, really high profile uh, art historical but just content in the images and uploading collections that hadn't seen hadn't been presented a lot of times was really you know it gave us a very good vibe and good energy and that's when we really started collaborating and uploading more and more and more and um this really helped us opening up the collection and um Maybe interesting for you because uh, Europeana has written a couple of uh, reports about uh, the projects uh, that we did at the Wright Museum, uh, and also about the reasons why we were, we started opening up our collections. Uh, so the first reason is that uh, even as a museum, if you think your collection is safe in your museum and you don't share your data, a lot of times people already have pictures uh, of your of your works of art and they already have put them online and probably in poor quality. So one of the things in the Rijksmuseum we wanted to deal with was, you know, if, if you look at art from the Rijksmuseum, can we then provide good quality and also good metadata, good information about this art? You know, not just the poor quality uh, photos people take. And the second reason uh, why and the second research is about the economical uh, value or loss of value. A lot of museums are afraid that they will lose money if they put their works of art online. And um, we did research on that in the Rights Museum, and we actually found out that we did not lose money. No one else is going to make money out of the collection of the Rights Museum uh, because there's no real business model there. It's, you know, someone else cannot start a, a, a bookshop on your collection or a, even postcards from your collection don't really sell very well. Another thing is that a lot of people see your images, your art, and they want to see the real thing. So it, it is propaganda for your organization. When they see all these beautiful images, they actually want to go to your museum. So, um, this report is about, you know, opening up means you get more visitors in your physical institute because a lot of people see your works of art. Um, 
And the same goes for Wikipedia. Um, we uploaded a lot of works uh, a couple of years ago, and now it's sort of, you know, the community itself is uploading a lot of works of art from the Rijksmuseum. Uh, people use them in all kinds of articles. People uh, also look at them, and we can see the statistics, and you can see that uh, the uh, Wikipedia part of the Wiki Commons part about the Rijksmuseum has a million visitors a month and the Rijksmuseum website has 300,000 visitors a month. So, you know, Wikipedia is more popular than the Rijksmuseum website. So it's, it's, it's just a positive experience. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's very interesting story that uh, Rijksmuseum uh, are willing to open their collection to Wikimedia Commons because uh, when we approach a uh, glam institution in Indonesia, they they uh, they are afraid that uh, when we open their collection to Wikimedia Commons, they will uh, lose the the visitors uh, and also they will lose the uh, the the chance in uh, getting more visitors to to the museum. Uh, that's why um, when we approach them uh, when when we want uh, when we are trying to open their collection to wikimedia commons we want to we want to set an example from uh, institution uh, from the netherlands for, exa for example uh, how the how the uh, glams institution from the netherlands uh, experience when uh, they open their collection so we can I give uh, this is the example when when you are trying to open your collection to Wikimedia Commons, and also I agree that uh, when 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 uh, a collection or when a digital uh, copy of the collection uh, from the museum uh, is open to Wikimedia Commons, they will not uh, lose their visitor because uh, when when we di digitize uh, books, for example, or a photograph or uh, 3D objects for, from the museum. Uh, sometimes uh, people are interested to see them in person. So that will be uh, a best way or the better way to, to attract more visit visitors because uh, in this era, when, when more people are um, um, exposed by the internet, uh, we need to 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 set that uh, they are not only uh, offline visitors but also online visitors. So when you open your collection to Wikimedia Commons, you also have you will also get uh, online visitors. Uh, this is uh, the 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 number of visitors uh, are coming mm -hmm. on the Wikimedia Commons page. So that's yeah. very very interesting story. Yeah, a lot of museums need to switch in their thinking. You know, they <laughs> only count the physical visitors, but mm -hmm. when you look at the online visitors for your collections mm -hmm. and your institute, it's mind blowing. And it's from everywhere. You get you get emails from countries you never heard of, and people have all kinds of comments. They help you translate uh, text on on the images. They they tell you what bird it is. It's amazing and. The more you share, the more willing audiences are to help you, you know, improve your annotation and improve your metadata and improve everything. So it's it's very rewarding. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 true. Uh, because uh, we we once um, uh, collaborate with Wikimedia Netherlands to translate or to uh, transcribe. Uh, the documents from uh, a museum in Yogyakarta and it was a very very amaz amazing amazing uh, for us because uh, you know Indonesian people are are not really um, uh, fluent in um, speaking Dutch for example mm -hmm. uh, we we are uh, we have a problem when we are when we are reading the the, the text, uh, if it is uh, handwritten, for example, it is very, very uh, yeah. just like uh, we need someone from the Netherlands or uh, who speak uh, the Dutch to to transcribe this, uh, to to read this to us because uh, we we don't know the the language and but this uh, what we have to to know what uh, it is written in the in the document. So. Uh, it was very very interesting uh, experience when we are uh, collaborating with uh, Wikimedia Netherlands back in uh, 2017 or 2018. 
Ah, yes, yeah. some some years ago. Yeah, and this is also, you know, another way of collaboration. So you don't have to share, you know, your most important, most valuable art. You can also share, you know, your archival documents mm -hmm. that are usually somewhere in a box in storage and no one ever sees them. Um, but if you start, you know, putting them online and have people translate them, then suddenly uh, you can see that there's new information there that can be very valuable. Um, so, for instance, we I work on the Second World War now, and we shared uh, everything we knew about concentration camps in the Netherlands and in Europe. So, uh, GPS coordinates, just a small description, how many Dutch prisoners were in these camps. And other people are, so we uploaded it to Wikidata, and other people are also adding information to it. So, for instance, if they have an image of this camp, they add it. And we can now take that back. So we gave some information and the community is helping us adding more information to it and make it more interesting for everyone. So that's really cool. So yeah. Um I would like to know whether uh the, the collaboration that uh Wikimedia Netherlands uh has uh done uh in the past years or uh currently happening uh, right now. Uh, we recognize that uh, Wikimedia Netherlands has been partnering with uh, institution, claim institution in the Netherlands. And also, uh, I I am uh, one of the writers in the This Month in Glam uh, newsletter. So I, I sometimes uh, read the newsletter from uh, Wikimedia Netherlands. And uh, I found that uh, Wikimedia Netherlands has also uh, partnered with uh, with other Wikimedia affiliates and also uh, user groups in the same initiative. Uh, for example, I I remember that uh, I read uh, you you have uh, the initiative name uh, Wiki Loves Caribbean, for example. Uh, could you please uh, show us uh, or uh, tell us the story about it? Maybe we can. We can do the same thing uh, in the future with Wiki Media Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, Wiki Goes Caribbean, that yes. started a few years ago when we uh, realized that, well, just the Netherlands is in Europe, but there's also a small part of the Netherlands which is in the Caribbean. There are six islands there which are still, in a way, part of the Netherlands. And they speak Dutch. So the Dutch language Wikipedia is also their Wikipedia. But there just wasn't enough information on there. For example, on the Dutch language Wikipedia, there were not articles about all the prime ministers of these islands. And of course, the prime ministers of the Netherlands and the prime ministers of Belgium, we have going back until 1800. So it's strange that that was not there. And, and there was more information missing and we didn't have enough photographs. So we, we started Wiki Goes Caribbean to, to see if we could involve and make people enthusiastic to start cooperating about these topics. So first we reached out to, to the Caribbean communities in the Netherlands and to the institutes there which have knowledge. And they put us in contact with uh, the, their partners on the islands themselves. And now we're really we're we're getting somewhere. There, are, these institutes are delivering, are uploading content. Uh, we have people writing uh, articles. We have writing events. There's actually one going on as we speak at the moment. There is a Wiki Goes Caribbean online writing event. Uh, and also, we have now partners, for example, the National Library of Aruba. It's a, a very small, independent island there. They are now also contributing uh, loads of content. And the next step will be that there is also a language spoken on these islands. It's called Papiamento. They have a very, very small Wikipedia. Uh, and we're now sort of helping them modernizing that Wikipedia a bit because they, they didn't really have visual editor yet and the category system was. So we're, we're trying to make it ready for, for to get more people. Uh, there is a user group in the Caribbean um, but they mainly focus on the English-speaking islands, so that's a bit of a, a problem. But we do want to want to work with them. But it's it's a really amazing project, and uh, yeah, I'm very happy with with what's going on there.
All right, right. that's very, very good initiative. I, I love, love to hear the story, Sandra. Uh, yes, um, I would like to show you something. Uh, this is not really uh, a new for you uh, because uh, we have been a uh, partner for some years. And then uh, I would like to show you this video and also for the audience. Ya teman-teman, jadi uh, kita sudah melihat beberapa menit video tadi. Jadi itu adalah video tentang wiki sejarah. Uh, wiki sejarah itu adalah kerjasama antara Wikimedia Indonesia dan Wikimedia Netherlands untuk membuka koleksi-koleksi tentang foto-foto dari Batavia, Bukit Tinggi, dan Yogyakarta pada tahun uh, 1080-an ke atas hingga 1900. 90 sekian ke bawah jadi kita mengadakan beberapa kegiatan yaitu uh, membuka akses koleksi fotonya dari lembaga klaim di uh, Belanda kemudian kita mengadakan uh, tantangan untuk menulis tentang artikel yang berhubungan dengan sejarah Indonesia dan Belanda kemudian juga kita mengadakan maraton data terstruktur untuk menambah data terstruktur ke dalam foto-foto yang sudah diunggah oleh Oke, okay, uh, Mas Iya, uh, kita sudah banyak sekali pertanyaan. Uh, jadi ada beberapa pertanyaan menarik. So, Lizzie and Sandra, as you can see, there is a lot of questions uh, from the audiences. I will read like this from Tahtiar Agung Nugraha. So, Sandra and Lizzie, what is the most interesting of Indonesian collection that you found in the Netherlands? Well, I I personally <laughs> found the uh, the the, the the, the video or the the the, poly, the journal uh polygon journal the videos you that you you just showed i thought they were mind-blowing uh, so some of them were completely clueless what they're saying or singing so we think oh this is cute and then it's you know horrible propaganda or it's really important and we just say, think oh some guy talking and um, but i think it's very it was always very hidden so no one knows what it is and no one knows how it how to interpret it so if we could collaborate on that and know what they're singing or saying or you know we can let you know what they're saying or singing i think that would be amazing and um, there's also uh this beautiful collection uh, of uh images i know from the second world war and up to the 50s from the dutch uh, military institute so it is about the military campaigns in Indonesia uh, after the Second World War. And there's a lot of fascinating material there, both landscape, but also uh, Dutch uh, soldiers in any place in Indonesia. And finally, the National Archives also has a lot of a big card system about uh, the CNIL uh, military men incarcerated by the Japanese. Uh, it's half Japanese and it's half dutch um english and it's poorly translated but it is about 40 50 000 cards of people that were incarcerated so for me these but i i focus on the second world war so sandra may have completely <laughs> different collections that she's fond of <laughs> well really now that i started looking into it but what really amazes me is how much there is and 
how how different all these collections are and that that's also reminds me how integrated the history of the Netherlands and Indonesia were for such a long time and we, we tend to forget that that was the case but you I saw also amazing, amazingly beautiful drawings of birds, Indonesian birds. They're from the Museum Naturalis, the Museum of Natural History, which are basically so beautiful that I would want all of them on my wall, really. But, but then what also is interesting is, what I found interesting is the, the collection of the Museum of World Cultures, which also has these images of, say, 1900, 1910, where you have uh, European women in these huge dresses and with the huge hats who must have been so uncomfortable in, in the heat of, of Indonesia, but are still sort of walking around in these clothes. I mean, that, that I, I found, found very interesting. I'm, I studied social sciences, so social history is really my thing. And every picture you find is really a, a story and so important. Wow, thank you for sharing that one. I will, I will like uh, go to the Wikimedia Commons and I will Google it. So intermezzo, so actually the song that we heard earlier is the Japanese uh, propaganda film that, yeah, you already like uh, open, help us to open the collection too. So the story is tell about like, we as the younger brother of the Japanese, the Japanese and the old brother. So we need to work together and then uh, to do this kind of the dream of the greater Asia, Asia, big Asia, something like this one. So actually the 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 movie, uh, when I watch in the YouTube, there is like several channels that reshare the video and a lot of the younger generation just joking about like, oh, I'm ready to work if I hear this song. Yeah, mm -hmm. something like this one. So it's kind of uh, from some younger generation that we don't, we didn't live in the past. We just make this one some kind of like uh, uh, give, giving the the happiest idea about these songs. I know that it's very like, um, you know, it's very sad to hear at this song if we were in the 1944, but if for the young generation, it's just like another thing that we should love of. That's, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and in that sense, it's good to know history yeah. because um, uh, we studied a lot of uh, propaganda about uh, during the Second World War in the Netherlands. And a lot of it is about, you know, glorifying life and glorifying all kinds of work and so on. And as a historian, you know what really happened behind the scenes. But the images, the propaganda is always beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe we can go to the next question. Rahmat, please. Yes. Uh, thank you, Ms. Bianto, uh, Lizzie, and Sandra for answering the question. Uh, could you please describe how important Wikimedia Commons, uh, yes, Wikimedia Commons in Netherlands, in the Netherlands, how it is going to fulfill the people needs of information? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, if you see that sort of more than a million images have been donated by Dutch clams to Wikimedia Commons, then, then yeah, people do find it important. Uh, they find it important to put their images in a place where they are accessible for everyone worldwide. And most of the GLAM cooperations and partnerships we have are so far have been concerned with uploading images to Commons. Um, on the other hand, I think that sort of the need, if you want to bring information and knowledge to the people, the, the main platform still is Wikipedia because there the story is told about the image. So uh, I think uh, Commons is hugely important for GLAMs and also for, for Wikimedians, but for people looking for information, they will, at least in the Netherlands, they will turn to Wikipedia. Uh, we have also asked sort of general audience, do you know Wikidata? Do you know Wikimedia Commons? And uh, most don't. Everybody knows Wikipedia, but the other projects are still a bit uh, yeah, unknown to, to the general audience. Yes. Yeah, because, uh, because Wikimedia Commons uh, only hosts the, the video or the image, uh, just uh, there is no context followed uh, to, to to give the picture what it is about. 
Ah uh, yes, uh, because uh, Wikipedia and Wikimedia uh, cannot be separated in this case. Uh, that should be uh, the good thing, the good platform to to bridge the the, the knowledge gap. Yeah, I I can share a link to one of the art objects of the Rijksmuseum. It's called uh, the Castle of Batavia. Uh, and it's not a very well-known uh, painting in the Rijksmuseum. It's a historical painting about the castle of Bestavia where a market day is on its way. Um, we uploaded it and didn't pay attention to it. And then at a certain point, this was the most viewed uh, image of the Rijksmuseum on Wikipedia. So we were stunned, you know, why, why this image? Uh, but it's a historical uh, picture that is like a picture book. So it tells a lot of small stories in this picture. And people that write Wikipedia articles cut up the painting. So they took out one figurine, uh, a Christian Japanese guy, and the, it, he was shown in an article about Christian Japanese. And another one uh, was about other people in this picture. So all these little details from this picture were used in many different articles and even to describe Batavia in the 16th or 17th century. Uh, and then this, this painting suddenly starts to have a life of its own. Uh, yeah, it's this one. So you will probably not know it, but there's a lot going on. And people that write Wikipedia articles love this kind of images because they can cut out all the small parts and use it in different articles. And this is then the way that the painting like this becomes very popular and well known um, but through Wikimedia Commons. Yes, yes uh, the pictures uh, uh, get my attention because uh, I I once uh, shared the uh, the pictures, the the, the paintings to uh, Glam Indonesia Twitter account. So uh, there are people. Uh, who guessing that who guess that uh where is it uh located where is it uh the 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 painting uh was painted for example and then uh we 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 have now that this is the the castle of Batavia painting so that that is very very uh interesting uh for yeah. us to to share the the probably the the history of uh, Batavia just uh 100 years ago Exactly. And yeah, for the mm. Rijks Museum, this is just, you know, a nice painting, but not more than that. Whereas, you know, you can do so much. Well, yeah. you have a huge collection, but it's, it's amazing if you can do other stuff with it. And this is actually the kind of imagery that people uh, that write articles on Wikipedia are interested in. If there's a lot, of, it's a lot going on and you can use parts for the entire picture to tell a story. So, yeah. Uh, maybe next question. Uh, okay, uh, this from Ramsey. Uh, sometimes it's common, I found a file that originated from the government archive. Uh, example, Gracia is Bundes archive mm -hmm. that returns original caption and tag as maybe erroneous, PRs, obsolete, or politi politically extreme. So does this also apply for files from the GLAM archives in the Netherlands, Sandra and Lizzie? Yeah. Well, we don't state that in our captions, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, and uh, uh, we did a couple of projects uh, about the language that we use currently to describe um, people from other uh, countries, other places in the world, uh, and some of the things that we just say are offended offensive for other people um, so you have to be aware currently of your language but there's also the the previous caption of paintings and it can be really offensive uh, for us now and um, so I understand this and I also understand it from the Bundes archive because of course the German archives well, they also hold, hold a lot of things from uh, difficult regimes um, it is difficult and you have to make a lot of choices about the language that you use now, but also how do you deal with the language from the past? So most of the colonial information that we have um, is very biased and sometimes it's very obvious and sometimes it's very subtle, but you always see, you know, the white family in the middle and the 
the colonial servants in the back somewhere serving, not being important in the image, these kinds of very subtle um, discriminatory things are in there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's good to be aware of this. And I think it's an excellent statement, uh, but I don't see my archive putting this in. <laughs> Uh, I do think it's something which we have to look at uh, in commons in general because a lot of material that is donated, it, it comes in a batch upload in bulk with, with the descriptions that were added in the original museum archives perhaps 50 or maybe 100 years ago and it just flows into into commons and I don't think we can, can continue doing that and keeping that sort of unchanged forever. Uh, the, the problem is that you're talking about millions and millions of files in, in a lot of different languages. But, but I think it's something we will have to start looking at because some of the descriptions are really not acceptable uh, anymore. And they will have been changed on the museum sites by now. Yeah. All right. Thank you for the answers, uh, Lizzie and Sandra. Uh, we have uh, several more questions. Uh, and then we we want to just uh, select one or two more questions because I think that uh, we have only eight more minutes for this talk show, and I will just go faster. So um, today there are two well-established music archive or foundations, Irama Nusantara and Aluna Nusantara in Indonesia, and one music museum in Indonesia. From my knowledge, there is Leiden University Archive, which which also collects Indonesian music records. Is it possible to collaborate someday in the future? Yeah, I would like to. Yeah, we, we don't do that much with music yet. So <laughs> I actually co already copied the question into a document so that I, I have it. Yeah, yeah, I would like to, to see what we can do there. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, thank you. So maybe we can move to another question. Um, there is like, I see there is good, good, actually not really questions, but um, from Rima, Bangladesh, please. So based on your explanation that in, in the Netherlands, um, people, the, the black institution didn't afraid that they want to open the collections because nobody want to 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 get any um, extra fund, extra money, and by selling the product, uh, is is really cool. I mean, like in Indonesia, the claim is usually afraid that uh, if they open the collections, the public will sell their product or something like this one, and then that that's the story. This very good um, comment from Prima. So is it is it like applicable in the Netherlands too? Uh, not not all people does want to like resell or selling the collections of the claim institutions in there. Well, there are things that people like to sell um, based on glam collections. Um, so of course, people print uh, paintings based on something from the Rijks Museum or maybe a duvet cover or. Uh, wallpaper or I don't know but it's it's limited and um, also even the the original image selling um, that most museums do are usually very elaborate so most museums don't have very good systems so a lot of it is done manually so manually selecting an image uh, selling it for instance to a book printer uh, you know, staying alert that you get your money and sending out reminders, you know, you need to pay us and then keeping in mind that the second or the third print also needs to be paid for and so on. So um, museums have these image selling departments that are usually very expensive and bring in very little money because it's not a very well organized part of the museum. Um, if you get rid of this and just put the images online, so you lose some income, but a lot of times this income doesn't even cover the costs of an image selling department. So, and when we gave up our image selling right at the Rights Museum, uh, they started printing images on the card, milk card cartons, you know, where milk is in. Um, 
we at the Rights Museum would never think of that. And of course, you lose some money because you don't sell cards with milk with an image on it. But on the other hand, we were never going to. And now everyone in the morning drinking a glass of milk would see an image from the Rights Museum. Uh, they even printed it on Heineken beer and people drinking beer now get to see a nice picture from the Rijks Museum. So yeah, other people make money of it, but uh, I think as a museum, we were only in a limited way able to sell images. It's not a full scheme like other online businesses or other bit of businesses do it. So if you are, if you are honest as a museum, you know, you're not in the business of making money of your collection. You're doing something else. Um, and another thing that is uh, starting to come up in the Netherlands for the last years now is that, well, actually, we as Dutch people are already paying our glands. You know, we're paying taxes and taxes go to the museums and to the archives. Um, so how commercial should archives and museums be in selling all their images or keeping it away from the audience because they're afraid someone else will sell it? It's, it is our collection. So it's also a principal point that, you know, we as, as, as civilians, we pay for these collections. So can we please see them and use them? Thank you, Lizzie, for your explanation. I mean, like, yeah, this is like the story is <laughs> happening, I think, everywhere in the world <laughs> where people are afraid to open the collection because of several, because like they always think about the negative one instead of the positive one. So yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, we and we were really scared too, and it, it took us years at, at in the Netherlands and at the Rijks Museum. But we we had to be honest, and I really appreciated my management then for being honest and saying, okay, we're actually not making a lot of money out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we can we can uh, make money from from the collection of the museum by by selling the merchandise. Yeah, I remember that uh, Rights Museum uh, organized uh, a competition uh, to to mix a public domain uh, collection. I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, just some years ago. And also, uh, we also uh, conducted uh, the same initiative in Indonesia. We, we call that uh, hack your culture or in Indonesia you can say retas uh, budaya so we invite the museum the claim institutions in Indonesia that have opened their collection to Wikimedia Commons and then we invite a uh, public uh, to to mix to remix to yeah. to make something new uh, from the collection that have been opened by the collection and from this uh, event uh, we saw that uh, there is uh, another way to how to uh, make money uh, mm -hmm. uh, by 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 uh, by using the open collection by using the public domain collection. I mean, just not not really make money um, the big money. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. but we can we can we can do something like uh, why not uh, why don't we make something like a souvenir. Uh, a mask, for example, or a tote bag, or uh, something like that, to to promote the museum to the public as well. Not only for the from by selling the tickets to to museum, uh, for example, but you can say you can you can also uh, sell the the souvenir that can be a yeah. token uh, for the for the visitors that hey, uh, this museum uh, has uh, interesting. Uh, so you, uh, maybe we, we can visit uh, the museum someday in the future to get uh, more uh, like this. So I think that's a lot why it's, uh, Some museums really have good shops, but usually mm -hmm. they don't sell, you know, just reproductions of the yes. collections. They uh -huh. actually do all these mm -hmm. creative stuff. So there are a couple of museums in the Netherlands. I visit their shops more than the museum I have. <laughs> But I, you know, a lot of times it's when they become creative and start doing other things with their own collection, it's mm -hmm. really selling well, uh, like textiles museums and so on. Yeah, they're doing cool yeah. stuff. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Sandra. <laughs> Textile museum and bread shops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Uh, I think we have uh, already at the end of the event. Oh, there is like oh. one question again, Mas Rahman. <laughs> okay. No, actually, it's from Butch, our close friends, Sandra and me and know Butch very well. So, had this interchapter glam partnership a good work around for colonial era materials or media that no longer no longer presence in Indonesian glam institutions? Maybe Sandra, you can uh, give a brief explanation about this one. Um, I think Butch is actually asking about material which is no longer present in Indonesian institutions, but is still in the Netherlands. If so, I so actually this one, Butch, it's yeah. actually like very good question for us because like um, we have like the National Archive in here in, in Indonesia, but sometimes it's hard for us even as the... Um, as the citizen of Nisha to get access into in there because uh, usually we need to get to, to pay several amount of money that is really expensive. So this is the reason why we like we have like very strong uh, connection and collaboration and we ask Wikimedia Netherlands to be one of the our closest ally in this movement because like it's it's very important for us to bring up uh, the collection that we cannot see in Indonesia. For example, uh, I mentioned about the Lingard Jati Agreement that uh, as the student uh, before, we only we only have the blur picture in our school books, school textbook, and it's very like sad because like, is it is it like a real event or not? And then when we see the video, uh, I remember from the Institute Belden, Belden Vision, Belden. I, I yeah, forgot the, the English name. Yeah. Yeah, but and Vision. And then this, yeah, it is very cool to see that one. Oh, this this even is really happening, and then, and then, and then I'm very thank. It, it's very grateful and very like, thankful to Wikimedia Netherlands to help us to open the collections. And we also got a lot of requests actually from uh, from our partner that they want to uh, see their collections uh, in whether whether the the old city or maybe like uh, maybe the the historical place that no longer. Uh, and um, they, they, they don't see anymore the the real physics and then they ask us they ask Wikimedia Indonesia and then we connect with the Wikimedia Land to 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 get to to get the collection if there is the collection in there um as well as uh, this is like maybe we will ask the questions and i will i will give you some highlight that several other uh, viewer or participant in this event also mentioned that they really want to have some collaboration with us like a gaya mentari from bengkulu they mentioned about like uh we have they have like several photos about the gold mining in the in the netherlands era in the north bengkulu and then as well there's like albertus pramuti uh, asking about the old city the photo of the old city in semarang java and the list of the the the, the collection that wikimedia netherlands uh Aldi, like open for indonesian collection so um yeah, that's it. So there is like a lot of good comment in there, but we cannot like um, ask uh, the, all the question to you because we have the limited time. So that's it. So yeah, maybe Sandra, okay. do you want to add something about our collaboration so Butch can have better contact? I, I think uh, Butch's question is, is very sort of relevant. What I can say is, if there is material in, in, in Dutch archives relating to the colonial period, uh, there will be no limitations or restrictions on releasing that material whatsoever. In, indeed, under Dutch law, if someone asks for it, it will have to be released. So if there is any stuff in, in Dutch official archives or collections which is lacking in Indonesia, it, it, yeah, there's absolutely no problem in releasing it via the Netherlands, unless it's a state secret or something terribly, terribly horrible, but uh, that's very rare for that old material. And, and I really think this is a really good way to make this shared history more sort of transparent, because I'm sure there's also material in Indonesia, photographs and data and stories, which we in the Netherlands don't know about and would be very relevant for, for our perspective. Thank you, Sandra and Lisi. So this is uh, our last event before uh, before we closing this event. Do you have some remarks about the whole discussions in in our evening in here in our uh, in your uh, I, I think afternoon, right? 
Afternoon. Afternoon. Yeah, Do you have some closing yeah. remarks before we closing the event? <laughs> I, I enjoyed it very much as I enjoyed the whole cooperation with the community in Indonesia. So uh, I hope this will not be the last time we have an event like this. Yeah, and I'm I'm really excited to see if we can, you know, if if you can point us to things that are really important or really relevant, and if we can find stuff that is really important for you. So. You know, digital helps us share our shared past in a completely new way. So I would be super, I'm super excited to see if we can learn from each other. So, and this on a very rainy Dutch afternoon would make my day very sunny. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Terima kasih banyak, thank you. Rahmat will give the closing remark from us. Yeah. Bye. Terima kasih Mas Bianto. Thank you uh, Lizzie and Sandra for joining our talk show today. Uh, I hope that our collaboration will continue after this talk show and then we can uh, do something, uh, do more activities uh, in the future. Um, yep, jadi uh, kawan Wiki yang sedang menonton acara ini, uh, kami mengucapkan terima kasih banyak atas uh, partisipasinya. Mohon maaf jika ada pertanyaan kawan-kawan Wiki yang belum sempat kami bacakan. Kami juga ingin um, memberikan pengumuman bahwa pada tanggal 29 Mei nanti, 29 Mei 2021, kita akan mengarahkan temu daring uh, antara peserta dari Indonesia dan juga peserta dari Belanda. Kawan-kawan uh, bisa mendaftar uh, di poster ini, jadi uh, di sini ada pranala yang bisa teman-teman gunakan untuk mendaftar dalam acara temu daring itu. Jadi kami harap kita dapat bertemu lagi nanti pada minggu depan. Jika ada hal-hal yang perlu ditanyakan, jangan sungkan untuk menghubungi kami baik melalui komentar ataupun melalui surel yang ada di poster tadi. Apabila kawan-kawan tertarik dengan program GLAM dari Wikimedia Indonesia, silakan kunjungi situs GLAM titik wikimedia titik or titik id dan juga ikuti media sosial glam Indonesia di Twitter di at glam underscore Indonesia untuk belajar tentang Wikipedia pantau juga kegiatan dari tim pendidikan kami di media sosial Instagram at pendidikan WMID kemudian dapatkan sumber bacaan terkait di pendidikan titik wikimedia titik titik or titik id pantau juga kanal media sosial Wikimedia Indonesia di Facebook Twitter dan Instagram untuk mendapatkan informasi acara-acara terkini lainnya. So, uh, thank you Sandra. Uh, thank, thank you once again for your uh, time uh, this afternoon. Uh, we hope that we can uh, see each other next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.